Welcome to K6 Outdoors and welcome to another episode. My name is Kyle. Today I wanted to show you guys or at least talk through the Eco 2S Plus model I have up here from King Electric. Again, this is a 7500 watt heater uh, with a basically a two-stage heat between 7500 watts and 5000 watts which automatically adjust according to what power is needed to basically heat the room. As we've discussed before, electric may not be quite as instantaneous as he is you'd expect to see from a forced induction heater. Some of those smaller gas heaters are typically around 50,000 BTU. This 7,500 watt unit has a max capacity of 25,600 BTU per hour. So it kind of gives you an idea of what kind of heat this does put out. Um, and again, there's been some concern about electric costing a ton. We'll cover that in a little different video. I'm gonna give you a hint there. It's really not as bad as you would think it is. You know, when you start comparing LP and, and um, you know, natural gas prices right now. And anyways, long story short, we'll cover that in another video, but this thing does put out 25,000, just a hair over 25,000 B2 per hour, and does blow at a 25 foot out the front here. Um, again, it's not gonna feel as instantaneous a heat as you're gonna get with a forced induction heater but there are some benefits with the electric heater in itself. So I know I've had people voice their concerns on whether or not this is enough to heat a shop. Rest assured, this is a 24 by 24 garage, nine foot ceiling. And if you want to figure out the cubic footage on that, you definitely can, but it keeps this warm, no problem. We, uh, just a couple weeks ago, well, week and a half ago, it was negative 20 degrees outside, air temperature. And uh, yeah, it ran more, and um, we'll, we'll, I can show you some stats on that at another time, but. About every hour it would cycle to keep the garage at 45 degrees um, when it's that cold, but I have no problem maintaining that temperature in that environment with this little heater. So, and to be completely honest with you, and I'm not trying to be a, a spoiler here, but it ran in the low setting at 5,000 watts the majority of the time, and only a handful of times did I have to jump up into the two stage or the uh, 7,500 watt function of the heater to keep the garage at the heat it needed to. So, obviously, yeah. Uh, an insulated garage is going to be the key to that, you know, to need less heat to begin with. But um, the heater did a good job, and I'm not going to complain. It was toasty 45 degrees in here, and just about four inches on the other side of that wall, it was negative 20. Air temp, and that, those days it was like 15, 20 mile an hour wind. So the wind chill was actually really low, which you know, basically affects us humans here, and we complain more. But um, it did a good job. So if you guys are looking in the market for an electric heater, I definitely recommend the King Electric. It does a great job. I know there's some other uh, Chinese knockoff brands and, and cheaper units you can pick up, but um, there's many reasons that we've discussed why I like this heater. And um, I do have some other videos. I'll put some links above to those of uh, the installation of this heater. And King Electric did provide this specific heater for testing that we're doing, um, but I did have its, I guess we'll call it little brother, the Eco 2S model. Um, really, it's the same exact heater. Um, it just doesn't have the added external um, thermostat functionality and some of the bells and whistles with the Wi-Fi and uh, the remote sensor and such. So um, I'll put some videos down below if you guys want to check those out as well. I highly recommend the King Electric. I'm being bluntly honest with you. I'd buy another one in a heartbeat. I'm, I've already bought one, you know, uh, and I would recommend it to anybody who would like to buy one. And yes, they're going to be a little bit pricier than those other ones, but rest assured because this stuff is made here in the United States, has a great five-year warranty. And if uh, being made in the USA and supporting U.S. jobs is a priority to you, maybe consider that for this reason. Not to mention the fact it does have a great five-year warranty that I mentioned, and I've had nothing but great luck with mine. So we're going to go ahead and see what it takes to get the ambient air temperature from 45 degrees up to 55 degrees and what kind of time it's going to take. I'm going to put a stopwatch out here or a phone stopwatch, whatever it is, so you can track the time, and uh, we'll cover that in a little bit here. So let's go ahead and we'll get the cameras moved over to the thermostat. We're gonna go ahead and bump it up to 55 degrees. You'll notice that it's gonna kick the heater on to the second stage where it's using 7,500 watts. And it's gonna run that to where it gets to a point to where it thinks it can drop the, the wattage down and um, reduce its heat output. So I have a pretty good idea how long it's gonna take because that's what I have to run it for. And it doesn't, you know, it's not as long as you'd expect it to be because, you know, raising an air temperature 10 degrees could take a little while. But for me, that's usually what I do. I set it at uh, 10 degrees warmer, come out here and work in the shop because 55 degrees is perfectly A-OK -okay to me. So let's go ahead and get to it and see how long it takes us to get a 10 degree temperature rise in this garage using the King Electric Eco 2S Plus, the 7,500 watt, 240 volt version. In case you don't trust me, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the old uh, timer here, the old stopwatch, so you can see what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the temp up Turn the stopwatch on and see what happens. Thank you. 
not sure if you can see it or not, but the room temperature has reached 55 degrees. When the thermostat shut the unit off, it let the fan cool down the coils there to get the most amount of uh, heat as we can out of the system. It's not wasted. And it, <clears throat> I don't know if the camera, I think the camera did die, but at the end, if you guys can see this, that was our result. So 45 minutes and 16 seconds to raise the temperature of the room 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And one thing I want to note is I do have my Ecobee thermostat set at maximum power saving mode. So that does affect a few different things. It's going to keep it in that lower um, stage of the heater longer. As you'll notice, the first 10 minutes of the video is running at the 5,500 watts, which is you know 2,000 watts lower than the high setting, and it does make a pretty substantial difference in heat output. Um, so again, 45 minutes here uh, to get up 10 degrees in the room. It's currently 55 degrees in here. It's in very, very comfortable uh, room to be in right now. Again, part of this has to do with the settings of my Ecobee thermostat that I installed. Um, if you guys want to be curious about that video, I'll put that below as well. But again, 45 minutes is what it takes to get 10 degrees change in here. Uh, if you run a higher BTU furnace or a bigger electric heater, you're going to see a quicker change. Um, but like I said, normally if I'm going to be out here, I set the, the temperature from the house, um, give myself a little bit of time, 20, 30 minutes, come out here and the, it's nice and warm to where I need to be. And again, if you adjust the settings on that thermostat, it's going to allow it to kick into the higher range of that uh, stage sooner. So it's going to heat up faster. Basically, the way I've got it set up is I'm trying to save as much money as possible by doing it. I, I'm just kind of curious to see how cheap can you do it um, and keep this above freezing because this stays 45 degrees all the time, regardless of how cold it is outside. So hopefully you guys kind of find that informative, what you can expect. Again, this is just a hair over 25,000 BTU per hour that this electric heater puts out. This is a 7,500 watt, 240 volt King Electric Eco 2S Plus heater. I think it does a great job. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit longer to you know, heat up that wider range there, but once it gets there, it does a good job holding it, and it has no problem really getting there. You just got to give it a little bit of time because, again, it is technically a lower BTU output compared to if you were to use a 50,000 BTU um, gas heater. Of course, whatever you buy for a heater, the larger the output, the faster it's going to create change in the room, but then there's a certain amount of short cycling you deal with and efficiencies and all that fun stuff. So... I'm fine with what we've got to do here. I'm, you know, on the weekends is really the only time I'm out here for any significant amount of time where I will not warm enough to do that. So I plan a little bit ahead or, um, you know, I'd come out here with a coat on and as it warms up, we go. But usually this hooded sweatshirt is more than sufficient for me. And uh, if I need it warmer, we just kind of adjust it from there. So long story short, about 45 minutes to heat it up. If we had it in second stage only, I'm sure we could cut about 10 minutes off of that. Take about a half hour to get uh, a 10 degree range uh, increase there. Um, again, you have to consider that as part of your purchasing decisions, and I'm just trying to give you guys information to help you make some decisions here on the channel. One of the main reasons for this channel is I'd like to share some of this with you so I can learn some of this stuff the hard way so you guys don't have to, and you can make some educated decisions when purchasing things for yourself or for your company or whoever it is you're, you're buying to, looking to buy this different stuff for. Again, I can't express enough how personally I am pleased with these King Electric heaters. Um, I don't know that I'll ever go a different way. I, I'll... I'm not going to go down that, that train right now, down that path. We're not going to talk about that, but it's been really good for me. And I am completely fine with how it performs. And just keep in mind that the higher the wattage you use, the more it's going to cost you per hour. And, and it's not a big deal. Um, normally, you know, you're talking an extra 25 cents per hour if you're, if you're trying to do the math there uh, within reason, if you figure 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So... Hope you guys found this informative. If you guys liked today's video, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button. If you like this content and other outdoor stuff that I do on the channel, I'd encourage you guys to subscribe to the channel and follow along, and I'd greatly appreciate that as well. I'm just trying to grow the k Outdoors YouTube family and go from there. Got some stuff happening around the house. Um, we have a third child due soon, and I got to get some stuff buttoned up before that all happens. So thanks for stopping into k Outdoors. My name is Kyle. I greatly appreciate your viewership, and I'll catch you in the next one. We'll see ya.